Hello everyone, this is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Welcome to Objective C for Absolute Beginners. Tonight we're going to be covering by popular demand what developers should know about iOS 6. So I'm going to go through, since um, right now iOS 6 is largely under NDA, I'll go over the things that have been uh, publicly disclosed that's not under NDA, as well as things that you need to consider for your applications with iOS 6. Additionally, if you are uh, um, under NDA as well, I'll show you where to go where you can get all the information about um, um, iOS 6 beta, how to download it, how to get started, how to get access to documentation, etc. Um, also, for those of you that are attending the first uh, for the first time, and those of you that are taking my courses, um, I will have my courses updated for um, both the new version of Xcode. Um, which is uh, in beta as well, and iOS 6. They'll be updated started next month for both iOS 5 and iOS 6. So I'll have all those changes as well um, updated for my courses, which are every Monday and Wednesday um, at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time. All right, so um, let's go and talk a little bit about iOS 6 and um, where to get the information, where to download it. You can currently start uh, downloading it and running it on your iPhone or your iPad. Um, if you just open up a browser and log in under, I'll show you here, let me get my, go to developer.apple.com, click on iOS development and log in. And if you have, um, if you have paid the $99, so if you have just signed up to get the SDK, you will not get access to iOS 6. This will be grayed out. But if you've paid the $99 every year, this will be enabled. And from this link, you can download the what's new in iOS 6. Um, you can download iOS 6 uh, for your different devices. Um, and then of course, when you do that, you need to X, uh, download X, uh, Xcode and iTunes. If you download Xcode here, which, which you'll have to for the beta, you'll want to have both the current production version of Xcode and the beta on your machine. Be very careful when you download the beta version. And when you get to the step that looks like this, click on the developer, click on the path, and you'll be able to change the path so you can have both the beta version and the production version on your machine because you will not be able to submit apps to the App Store with the beta version, okay? And furthermore, remember when you install it on your device, you can never go backwards. You can only go forward. So make sure you put it on a device that you don't need to test uh, the current uh, iOS 5 apps under and, um, you know, that uh, otherwise you won't be able to test on a device before you submit to the App Store on a production advice uh, with the production iOS 5. So um, additionally, for those of you that are attending live, I'll be able to answer your questions for any questions that you have on anything that I'm covering tonight or anything else on iOS 5 or iOS 6. Um, I'm able to cover the beta version um, in my courses because everybody, that's one of the requirements everybody has to, um, has to be in the beta program so I can go over the things that are um, under non-disclosure. So I want to make sure I honor that. Okay, so let's talk about one of the things that is new in syntax that we'll be covering more in the class next month, and that's with arrays um, and basically containers. Uh, currently, if you, if you access array, you have to do something like this, object um, at index and uh, excuse my uh, my capitalization it's not going to autocomplete and then you know you put your index number or whatever well with the containers they're going to allow scripting so you'll be able to do things like I'm giving you the pseudo syntax right now but things like you do with other um, or in other languages with arrays so actually it's going to look something like that sorry you know if you want to index the second item of the array or pass in a list of items into your array. You'll be able to do that with syntax. This is again, pseudocode, sim very similar to this with your containers. So that makes it very, very nice. 
All right. Um, another thing I want to talk about what's new in iOS 6 is some things that you can't do that we were all hoping that you could do with iOS 6, but things that you can start thinking about now. Um, just a second, let me get to my notes. One is Siri. You currently do not have access in iOS 5 or 6 to the Siri API. Bummer, they haven't opened that up yet. Um, additionally, there's a new maps available and you're able, uh, basically in order to take advantage of the maps, you don't need to do anything differently um, than what you currently do to call your current Google Maps and pass it your latitude and longitude to use Google Maps. I'm sorry, to use Apple's new map kit. It It is a total replacement under iOS 6, so there's nothing new that you have to do with that. Do test your apps out, though, that um, currently use the Google map kit, which is Apple's current map kit, that's being replaced with the new map kit. So test your applications with that. You cannot use the new map kit, just like with Google's map kit, you cannot use it for navigation programs. Okay, so you can't do turn by turn navigation even in uh, Apple's maps currently. All right. Another thing they no they noted during the presentation was that certain key applications that do things better than what Apple does, they'll they'll default to that application, potentially your application if it's well. So one of the exa one of the examples they used with maps is how you can go and get um, turn by turn directions if you're walking. Well, they don't have an app for that, but they'll they link to one of the more popular ones and will drive people to that application automatically. So it's a good a good deal for you if that's your application. So um, it will be interesting to see how that plays out. The other big thing that you need to consider is Passbook. If you haven't watched the keynote, watch past the, the part on key keynote. I think it's at, I found it the 93 minute mark of the uh, keynote that's available on apple.com. The 93 minute mark, basically Passbook is the ability to, is Apple's first attempt at a wallet, an electronic wallet. And you can, through JSON, type of interactions, um, put items, put your own item, your own card into the wallet. All right. And um, it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out, especially as other businesses try to take advantage of that. So take a look at Passbook. I think it's a great opportunity for a lot of apps, also for a lot of businesses out there. All right, so I'm about out of time here on my 10 minute slot for my YouTube videos, but I'm going to stop the recording. And those of you that are attending live, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions offline here um, in the GoToWebinar control panel under the questions box. Um, just feel free to type them out. Those of you that are watching the YouTube sessions, you can just go and you can attend live too anytime. Just go to the free video link. And um, here's where all the previous recorded YouTube videos are, as well as how to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you automatically get the uh, new recordings when I post them. And then to attend live, just click here. Well, thanks for attending. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, and I'm going to take questions live now from, uh, from my students and also those that are just reading the book or have general questions. Thanks, everybody. Good night.